Okay, the final lesson in this chapter is lesson 2-6 where we're going to compare and order real numbers. So our new vocabulary uh, for this lesson is irrational number, rational number, and real number. Now it'd be a very good idea if you were to put this graphic into your notes. So why don't you pause the video and show um, this diagram where we're talking about the sets of real numbers. Real numbers are divided into rational and irrational. Now some numbers I'd like for you to add to counting. Uh, these are numbers you count with. One, two, three, four, five. Now whole numbers just takes the counting numbers and adds a zero to it. That's the one thing that's different. Integers add the negative numbers. So negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. And then our rational numbers are our fractions and our decimals that are terminating or repeating. And our irrational numbers are numbers that we write that we can't write them as a ratio because they're non-terminating, they're non-repeating, they're just irrational. That'd be like running forever and never stopping. You ever seen the movie Forrest Gump? Makes me think of, he was very irrational. So to compare real numbers, you write rational numbers as decimals and approximate irrational numbers as decimals. So you take them to the same amount of decimal places out so that you compare them. And then you're going to use the less than, greater than, or equal to signs to compare them. So, for instance, the opposite of the square root of 4 is less than 75 hundredths, which is less than the square root of 16. So, that's how that we would order and compare them. To compare real numbers, compare place values or think of each number's placement on a number line. So, a lot of times if you're having difficulty, draw yourself a number line and then plot those uh, numbers on the number line and then you can see which one's less than or greater than. Uh, knowing that as the numbers go to the right, they get larger. Let's look at an example. All right, identify all sets to which 2 and 35 hundredths belong. Well, it's a real number because we're discussing real numbers. Uh, because the number 2 and 35 hundredths terminates or repeats, it is rational. It's uh, written as a decimal, so it's not an integer, whole number, or counting number. And so, and finally, you could say that it belongs to the real and rational because it does not belong to those others. So now take a moment and answer the questions on your turn. Okay, 2.7183, what kind of number is that? You say real? Good job. Because it does not terminate or repeat it is not, oh, uh, let's see, or repeat, it is a irrational number. It is irrational, it is not an integer, and it belongs, so it belongs to the set of real and, and irrational. Well, because it's irrational, it doesn't belong to any of the sets on the rational side. If it's irrational, it doesn't fit in any of these. So once you get to rational and real, you can stop comparing it. Okay, example two. We're to use the greater than, less than, or equal to to compare a negative 9 and negative 19, 6. So first of all, let's write them both in decimal form. Negative 9.0 and a negative 19 over 6 is a negative 3.16 repeating. Now this is what I like to do when I'm comparing them. Notice this one has two decimal places. I would put another zero. That makes that really easy to see. So if you always keep them in the same amount of decimal places and just write zeros, it helps you uh, realize which number is less than or greater than. So on a number line, negative 19 sixteenths is farther to the right. So negative 19 sixteenths is greater than a negative 9. We could also say that negative 9 is less than negative 19 sixteenths, couldn't we? It just depends on which number is listed first. So it's your turn. So pause the video for a moment and answer these questions. Write them both in decimal form. Tell me which one is to the farther right and then write the inequality. Okay, we can rewrite 1 fourth as uh, 25 hundredths or 0 0.25 and one-third is 0 0.3333 and it keeps repeating. So on a number line, one-third is to the farthest right. So one-fourth and one-third, 0 0.25 is going to be right here. 
0.3333 is going to be right in here. So right in inequality, one fourth is less than one third. Another example. They want to order these numbers from least to greatest, so they give you several. So you have to change all of them to decimals. Again, my preference is because this one goes out three, I'd put two more zeros here, one zero there, two more zeros here, and it just helps you, your brain to see it if you have trouble with this kind of thing, helps your brain to see how, how to order these. So we compare the decimals, and so we see that this is the smallest number with this one next then this one and then this one now when you when you order them from least to greatest you don't write down their decimal equivalents they want you to order the original numbers so that's why it's handy to actually write down what it is you're doing don't try to do it all in the calculator and keep it in your head alright I want you to pause the video and answer the problems on your turn okay did you get negative 8.0 negative 6.0 8.4343 and 2. So if you order in from least to greatest, negative square root of 64, negative 6, square root of 4, and 8.43 repeating. Okay, good job. Now I want you to work this guided practice and then you'll come back in a little bit and we'll check your answers. Okay, did you get that this one is real and rational? The square root of 169, what is the square root of 169? Did you get 13? Well, 13 is real, rational, an integer, whole, and counting. Two-thirds is real and rational. And the square root of 2 is real, but it is irrational. Okay, good job. Now for some step-by-step -step practice, I want you to pause the video again and uh, answer these questions and then come back and check your answer. Okay, I'm going to give you just a moment to check your answers. And then compare the decimals. So we've, we ordered the decimals and then that makes it easy to go ahead and find out the corresponding numbers from least to greatest. Awesome job. Okay, now I'd like for you to take uh, time to practice ordering numbers from least to greatest. There's only two problems here, so pause the video and do the work, and then come back and check your answers. Okay, you can pause the video and check your answers. Good job, guys. Okay, toward the end of the video, we've got our step-by-step -step practice solving, our problem-solving practice. So pause the video, read the problem, and you know how to go about changing these to a decimal. Okay, good job, guys. Okay, so we had to change each to a decimal. We know we're going from least to greatest. So after we wrote them all as a decimal, then the answers. And you can check your answer by plotting them on a number line. So you can pause the video to finish checking your answers, and then you're ready to work your uh, skills and concepts practice.